Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi wassalatu wassalam Ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Wa man ihtada bihadihi ila yawmidin Wa ba'da All praises and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For having allowing us to continue with another one of our series From the fourth hadith of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala and today we'll be going into the 12 hadiths from the compilation of Imam Nawawi. This hadith was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Min husni islam mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'nihi. That part of a perfection of a person's Islam is his leaving alone that which does not concern him. This hadith was recorded by Imam Timothy rahimahullah. In his book, so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us in this hadith, for the, from the perfection of a believer's iman, for from the perfection of a person's Islam, is that he does not concern himself, or he does he leave alone that which is of no concern to him. Imam Ibn Rajab al Hamali rahimahullah taala, one of the commentators of a hadith, and also one of the commentators of the compilation of Imam Nawawi for the hadith, he made mention. That in this hadith, which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us here, it is a foundation. It is the foundation of manners. It is a foundation of behavior and etiquettes in Islam. He also quote another Imam Ibn Rajab. Also quote another scholar mentioned that there are four hadiths that is the main concept for good manners and behaviors in Islam, and this hadith. Is one of those four hadiths, the hadith of from the perfection of a Muslim iman for a believer iman and person Islam is that he leaving alone that which does not concern him. The second hadith is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Let him who believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala in the day of judgment either speak good or remain silent," and that hadith is recorded Imam, by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. The third hadith is that a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked him to advise. He asked Rasulullah some for advice. Advise me, counsel me. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "Do not get angry. Do not become angry." The man repeated his questions several times. Some narration have three times, and at each time Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised him, "Do not become angry." The fourth of these hadiths that consists of manners that is the foundation of all manners and good behavior is that also recorded in by Imam Bukhari rahimahullah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother or he loves for his brother what he wishes for himself or what he loves for himself no one of you truly perfect his iman until you love for someone else you love for your muslim brother what you love for yourself so these are the four hadiths in which Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah he quoted Ibn Abi Zaid al Ibn Abi Zaid al Qayrawani saying that these four hadiths are the foundation, are the main concept for good manners and good behavior in Islam. Now back to our hadith. From this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us the advice that he's given us. We see it is very straightforward. There is nothing to beat around the bush and nothing to turn around or to avoid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us as believer that we should avoid things that has no concern to us. We avoid things that are of no concern to us, of no importance to us. There are no benefit to us in this life, then definitely there will also be no benefit for us in the hereafter, for that matter. In terms of our beliefs, in terms of our action, in terms of speech, if it does not concern us in no way, we should be involved in it. In justifying this point, one scholar by name Imam Al Ibn Al Arabi he mentioned that a person is not able to take care of all necessary matters of him own of his own self, an individual, he cannot take care of all necessary matters because it's so difficult. Then why will he worry himself or why will he concern himself or why will he get involved? in the unnecessary matters that are, are of no concern to him. So we have ourselves, we have our matters and our obligations to be concerned about. 
and as a believer, yes, before I continue, don't get me wrong, that we will have no concern for another person in regard to the affair of their suffering. That's a different scenario. If a Muslim is suffering, yes, Islam already taught us about that. The teachings of Islam already taught us in assisting the Muslim. As the hadith I mentioned from one of the concepts of good behavior is that a Muslim love for another Muslim what he love for himself. That is from the true Iman and the complete Iman and belief. So that's a different scenario. This is obviously something that has no concern over you. It, did not, it doesn't benefit you in this world. It doesn't benefit you in the hereafter. Helping a poor Muslim, that benefits you in this world. Giving good advice to someone who may be going astray, that benefits you in the hereafter and this world and the hereafter. It benefits that person. So, this hadith is clearly telling us that we don't involve ourselves with something or someone when it is of no concern for us in this world and the hereafter. It doesn't affect our belief. It has nothing to do with regards to our belief. It has nothing to do with regards to our speech or our actions. It has no concern. It has no interaction. It has no connection with us. Then we should should not bother ourselves. We should not interfere ourselves in such thing that will not be of benefit to us. And subhanallah, Islam is a beautiful religion. Islam is a religion of com complete Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al -yawm akmaltu lakum dinakum, that today I have completed and perfected this religion. There is nothing short in Islam. And regards to this, Islam also protects society. Islam protects individual and the whole society, the whole community at large from any kind of harm. Islam teaches us, that's why as Muslims we need to live good with our neighbor. So Islam teaches us in safety, in protecting oneself and protecting the community. And what more harm is there? And what can cause much more harm and inflict difficulty on a community and a society than when people are indulging in unnecessary matters, when people are indulging in things that has no concern for them. You meddle into affairs of others when you have no right to meddle in the affairs. You try to go and be, put yourself in between, put yourself in between where you should not have been. You're meddling in the, in the matters of people when you have no right to. You have no responsibility over that person and you have no responsibility also over that issue. Maybe a person is going through financial issue. You meddle into the affairs, but you have no responsibility that you can assist that person. But you meddle, you indulge yourself in that, you hear the story and you go and you talk elsewhere. So much of the difficulty and much of the harm and fitness and trials and tests that goes on in community is regard to people meddling into affairs of things that does not have any concern over them or things that they cannot have any responsibility over and that is why Islam subhanAllah being so beautiful it is, as it is Islam made such a guideline Rasulullah sallallahu advise us that we don't interfere in matters that has no concern over us so with regards to that when we avoid these unnecessary things things that has no concern over us it will also this practice will eventually take us away from having an indulgent evil in the society or causing harm in, in the society. And also Allah's advice is telling us to avoid, by doing this, we avoid social problems, we avoid problems in the community, we avoid dispute with neighbors or with friends or with subordinates and comrades. Another way of putting the hadith in a different way if we have to look at the hadith is a way of perfection of one iman. The perfection of the faith and the belief of a believer is that we concern ourselves with matters which are beneficial in this life and the hereafter. A believer concern is that he concern with whatever we have to the sustenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us in this world. We strive to, put, to provide for our family and at the same time we strive to make betterment of our hereafter so that we can gain eternal success. And as Muslims, we already have enough matters. We already have so much in our plate our plate is full to the extent that we will not even we should not even have enough time to deal with matters of our own self with whatever obligations whatever things and matters we have in our plate with whatever is filled up our plate it's so much that we will not even have or we should not even have time to deal with each and every aspect of our own self that we have to do then how are we to be indulged and how is it that we can find that time that we can go and indulge in and mingle in the affairs of others that has no concern to us. 
So with regards to this, what an uh, important question will arise that what are the things that a Muslim, a true believer should be concerned about? What are the things that should be concerning to him? There are few things I would like to highlight. One of the things which is concerned for a believer is to fulfill the obligation, fulfill the fara'id, the wajibat, the obligation that a Muslim has. The obligation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid on upon you. That you have to fulfill the fulfillment of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have to abide by. For example, we know that our five times daily salah, the five times daily prayer, Fajr, Suhar, Asir, Maghrib, Isha. And these are obligatory upon us. And we know, sad to say, but we know that it's a reality that many of us, many of our Muslims, due to the, the time of work and the different field of work, we will not have time to, many of us do not have the time, I do not find the time to perform each of these salah at this appointed time. Some of some of us will eventually fall lacking that we will make qada of the salah, we will repeat the salah after the time has finished. We probably pray Zohar at the time of Maghrib because we were too busy at the time of Zohar with our work. So our own obligation that we have to con to concern ourselves over, like I've mentioned, we cannot be able to deal and fulfill all of them as we meant to be dealing with. Then how are we going to show concern for things that has no matter, that has no importance to us? Secondly, is that we concern ourselves to perform more or perform as much as we can in regards to the optional, regards to the the preferable acts of Islam, as which we refer to as the mandubat. These are acts that is not compulsory upon us, but if we do it, we gain rewards. And as Muslims, if we already fulfill on our fara'id, our obligatory, then what, what more do we need? Then the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best way of achieving that is by performing the mandub, by performing prefer preferable actions. For example, fasting on Monday and Thursdays or fasting in the three, the ayam will be the three days of the full moon and the month, every Islamic month. Or we fast any optional fast that we want to fast for the betterment of ourselves to gain our spirituality to gain our nearness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So doing preferable acts. In regards to prayers, there's preferable prayers that we can pray once it's not at the three um, dislike times. So we can perform any amount of prayers that we want during the day. Preferable prayers, which is not obligatory upon us, that we can gain extra reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then third is that obviously, which has to be one of them, is that we avoid forbidden things, we avoid the muharramat, we avoid things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. Just as we do things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to do, we obviously have to avoid the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid us to do. And again, this is something which it is not easy upon each and every one of us. As believers, we are tested in different ways. And sometimes without our conscience, without correct conscience, or sometimes even without us realizing, we indulge in something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And one of those famous things, and one of the, the, the prohibition that many Muslims eventually today time we are falling into without realizing it as much, is that of riba, of interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid this completely in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has permitted, he has made halal that of transaction of business, transactions but and trade, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited riba. So it is something that unfortunately many Muslims without our conscience or without realizing, we tend to fall into this trap of utilizing or involving in riba. So we know why I'm saying this, I'm not pointing and making fault at anyone, but Going back towards the Hadith Rasulullah so I'm telling us that, that from the best and the perfect of a, perfection of a Muslim's faith or a person in Islam is that he leaves that which doesn't concern him. So how should we be involved in things? Why should we be involved in things that has no concern over us? When we have matters for our own self which we should be concerned about and we are not able to fulfill it. So the third as I've mentioned is that we concern ourselves in, in avoiding the prohibition from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from, or His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited us from. And fourth, is that we avoid as much as we can things that is makru or is disliked. Yes, today, many a times we say, oh, it is not haram, it is just 
you know dislike or scholars some scholars say oh we don't approve of it so yes makru is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give a direct order and prohibit from but true consensus of scholars or even through from the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or sometimes some of them is direct from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there are certain acts and actions which is referred to makru disliked acts and these disliked acts as much as we will say it is it will not lead us to become a mushrik to become a polytheist or it will not lead us under that disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but by failing to ne and neglecting to take heed of it eventually we don't know but the tricks of shaitan by shaitan just telling us that it is just a small minor thing it is nothing severe we don't know what trick shaitan will play and where it can lead us because all it takes to build a wall is small small steps you start from the bottom everything starts slowly you don't jump towards the top of the wall without from the bottom so you have to take baby steps similarly involving a wrong doesn't mean you're going to jump straight into the main wrong it starts with baby steps so as much as we can, with concern ourselves, we try to avoid actions that are deemed disliked, action which is macro, which are disliked from scholar, from consensus of scholars, which is referred to as ijma, from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by avoiding such things, inshallah, by concern ourselves with those things, pro prohibition and fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inshallah, we'll be able to have more concern and focus on our own self to make our own Islam, our own reformability, and make our own self better insan and better believer in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one point before I close is that in this era that we live in, there is one concern which we all should have because it's a challenge which is facing our community. It is an era that we live in in which technology and communication has become rampant and become predominant and many of us are being enslaved intellectually so we need to think about our future generation because the future generation is our responsibility what are we going to leave behind for them and we will be questionable we will be answerable to, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be held responsible for that what are we leaving behind we need to apply our knowledge we need to disseminate our knowledge and not just keep building reservoirs of knowledge without utilizing it. What's the use of you collecting water when you have, you're collecting all the water in a reservoir, in a bowl, in a barrel, without any intention, without any distribution of it and it's just overflowing. After a while it will overflow. Water will not stay in. So we have to apply it. We have to apply the knowledge that we have. So we need to design the future, design our future design a future for the future generation in ways that it can be beneficial to them and not just let others and we follow drastically we follow blindly and what others has created and which has nothing to do with Sharia or maybe out of Sharia but we have to try and implement and design our future for the future generation in regards to the, the times that we live in the era that we live in and this it can become a means of them that in the future when they come they will have these things easy and accessible to them so that they may be able to benefit in the correct way and not fall into the traps or the wrong things that was designed according to uh, or against sorry against sharia and when they fall into that they will eventually be led towards the wrong path because eventually the dua that we all make into allah subhanahu wa ta'ala daily in our salah guide us on the straight path we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us on the straight path and if we are blessed that we have a way that we can design and make things towards a straight path for the future generations. Let us utilize this. Let us make that our greatest concern. As much as we concern for ourselves, instead of concerning with things that has no benefit to us, dwelling on the things that has no benefit to us, that is one of the greatest concern which we as believers should have if it's not something to do with our own self. We have to, to, we have, to have the concern for the future generation. And we should be aware not to waste our time not to waste our time and effort, uh, time and effort in matters that are no concern of us. That is a reminder. That is a lesson from today's hadith. And let us never waste our time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala 
to protect us from wasting our time and involving in matters and dwelling on the matters that are no concern over us. And we should keep ourselves busy in matters that are of benefit to us, to our family, to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and be a benefit to us in this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us that our work can be of benefit, benefit to us and accept it in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that our work may be benefit for the future of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can concern ourselves with matters that can be of benefit to us, or be benefit to the community and the future generation. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.